So often when we discuss matters of U.S. healthcare policy on this channel, the good news seems scarce. But today we've got some pretty good news about surprise medical billing. That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. We've talked about surprise medical billing more than once around here because it's awful, because we want to warn as many people as we can about it. So they're not surprised. Surprise billing is what happens when an insured individual receives care from an out-of-network provider without their knowledge, for example, in an emergency situation, and ends up receiving an outrageously high bill for it that will not be covered by their insurance. This can happen even when the facility in question is in network because physicians such as emergency doctors and anesthesiologists in that facility may not be in the same insurance network unbeknownst to the patient. So even patients who have the time and wherewithal to ensure a facility is in network during an emergency can be hit with these bills. Stories serving as examples of this can be found in various media sources. One that received a lot of attention was of a man who had a heart attack in Texas, was rushed to the emergency room, and later received a bill for over $100,000 after what his insurance paid. There are thousands of stories like these, though, with some bills in the hundreds, some in the thousands, and some in the six figures. For many families, any of those sums are hard to pay as an extra expense, especially when they had no idea they were coming. And it's not rare. In 2014, 20% of inpatient admissions that began an emergency department and 14% of outpatient visits to the emergency department were likely to result in a surprise medical bill. According to a Kaiser Family Foundation survey, 80% of respondents supported the banning of this practice. While 2% either refused to answer or marked don't know, we can only wonder about the motivations of the 18% who appear to be in favor of it. Some states have passed at least partial protections against surprise billing, though several have not. And in general, most of Congress has been in agreement with banning the practice at a federal level. The pushback has come from, surprise, private equity firms, facilities, and physicians who profit from it. These groups are aggressively against reform and have, up until now, successfully beaten back legislation that would fix the problem for consumers. But that story's finally changing. The No Surprises Act was included in the December legislation for COVID relief paired with the latest government funding bill, and it goes into effect in 2022. The new legislation requires that patients only be held liable for the in-network cost-sharing amount billed for out-of-network emergency care or care from in-network facilities that ends up being out-of-network in cases where informed consent has not been obtained from the patient. So it's just what it sounds like. No more large and surprising bills for consumers that received out-of-network care in an emergency situation or in other situations without their informed consent. Instead, there's now a 30-day period during which healthcare providers and plan issuers can settle out-of-network claims, leaving the patient out of it. If they can't come to an agreement, they can utilize the independent dispute resolution process, a binding arbitration process administered by independent outsiders with no affiliation to the providers or issuers. Once enacted, the new rules will apply to doctors and hospitals. It will also apply to air ambulances. Ground ambulances, however, will be exempt. This is an interesting exemption, given that over 70% of ambulance rides results in a surprise bill for the patient. According to reporting from the New York Times, lawmakers viewed this as too complicated an issue to address right now in the middle of an already complicated fight. The bill does, however, establish a commission to study the ambulance issue, so we may see some changes for this exemption in the future. Also, a small handful of states already include ambulances and surprise billing legislation. Colorado approached the issue by banning surprise billing from privately funded ambulances, but allowing publicly funded ambulances to continue the practice. However, the privately funded ambulances are now reimbursed by insurers at 325% of the rate that Medicare pays. Note that Medicare already bans surprise billing for ambulances and simply pays a set rate. This private fee may be higher than what publicly funded ambulances are receiving overall, especially because many of their surprise bills end up unpaid. So there are some tricky issues, but this is huge progress after years of fighting for legislation that was already popular with most parties. We'll take the win for now. 
Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this previous episode on COVID vaccine side effects. We'd appreciate it if you'd like the video and subscribe to the channel down below. And if you consider going on over to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you too can help support the show and make it bigger and better, even during a global pandemic. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Josh Gister, and Michael Chin, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam.